All right, in this quick screencast, I want to show you how I've optimized WP Master XYZ to load in under two seconds. It's by no means the perfect loading time, the perfect optimization, but it's an optimization that covers all the basics and that is ROI positive, as I like to call it. So the most important things are done here, like CDN is implemented, uh, Breeze on Cloudways is configured. It's um, still has a lot of potential to go to like 1.2, maybe one, one second loading time. But again, it's not something that I want to spend another like 20 hours on or 15 hours on maybe to get everything like pixel perfect. For me, the below sub second, uh, below two second loading time is totally fine. So I run it on a Cloudway server and I want to go to that page right now and just want to show you the settings of the server. So it is a Vulture server, as you can see, located in Frankfurt, Germany. And it is a very basic server. So we have two gigabytes of RAM, nothing uh, too crazy, nothing too extraordinary, nothing too expensive either. I think it's $40 a month, something like that. And I just wanted to first walk you through the settings and packages I have on the server. And then I will go into the back end of the website and show you how I, how I have configured Breeze for a quick loading time. So execution limit 60 seconds usually works for me. Upload size 10 megabytes doesn't really impact speed whatsoever. So you can enter whatever value works for you. Basically depends on the file size you want to upload to a WordPress uh, media library on the server. Memory limit 128 megabytes works fine for me. And then I have no display errors. Obviously, I don't want to showcase errors on the live website. And error reporting and PHP time zone are just the default values. In the advanced settings, I didn't change anything. So that's totally fine. And it's probably something, especially with the PHP values and the MySQL buffer values, there's probably some potential lying in here. But as I said, that's nothing that I want to focus on right now and that usually you don't need to focus on right now either. For the packages, it's running PHP 7.3, the latest version that I can install on this server and MariaDB. 10.3 as well. We have Redis installed, no Elasticsearch, no Supervisor Daemon. And that's already it for the server. So as you can tell, it's nothing like groundbreaking, complex, nothing too extraordinary. Just wanted to get those covered. Uh, I can show you the monitoring as well. Just so you see we have um, plenty of headspace on this server. There are just a few applications on here, like a few, few sites that I'm working on. Um, to the plugins. So that is wpmastery.xyz, my main blog. Let me zoom in a little bit. So we have, I have 21 active plugins in here that could probably be reduced a little bit. But what I want to show you right now is the Breeze plugin. So that is the Cloudways caching plugin that I highly recommend if you're using Cloudways. And let's start with the basic options. As you can tell, I have everything enabled in here. And that is something when enabling these for the first time on your website, you want to go through them step by step. So just tick one box at a time, then purge the cache via this button right here and go to the website front end and see if you are breaking the website front end or not. Or as Cloudways recommends, create a staging website through the Cloudways hosting platform and then test breeze on the staging website before deploying it on the live website. And the reason is that you can very easily break the front end using minification. Basically, I don't want to go too deep into this, but basically minification means that from the source code of the website, uh, Breeze removes all the line breaks, all the empty lines, all the white spaces and things like that to just reduce the overall size of the code. And then you will obviously want to have GZIP compression and browser cache on. 
in the advanced options, my site is pretty simple, so I don't have to exclude any URLs. You might want to exclude URLs when you're running an e-commerce shop, for example. So uh, WooCommerce has some things that you want to um, keep in mind when setting up any kit cash plugin, not just the Breeze plugin, and there are plenty of articles about WooCommerce caching on that. For me, I just needed to enable the group files functionality with CSS and JavaScript. Again, test those thoroughly. They can also break the site's functionality and it's important that you have minification on, otherwise you won't get these to work. And if you find that you need to exclude some JavaScript files or some CSS files, for example, I had one website earlier today where I had to exclude a few JavaScript files from a map plugin, I think Mapify Pro it was, uh, that I had to exclude from minification and grouping. Uh, you want to add those URLs right here. And that's it for me. So you can obviously move JS files to the footer and also add JS files to be a little bit deferred. But for me, that wasn't necessary in this point. I'm using Astra Pro and Elementor Pro, by the way. Then you can optimize the database as well with Breeze which is super convenient. So that is for me probably everything. I, I can run everything besides the draft content because I'm working on that one. And as you can tell, the revisions are now zero, trackbacks, pingbacks are zero, and I have 40 less transient options, which also helps reduce bloat in the database. For a CDN, I'm using Bunny CDN. Big shout out to Piyush Patel who recommended that to me. It works really, really nice and it's also super affordable. But obviously Cloudways have their own CDN in collaboration with Stackpath as well. And again, for me, nothing really that I needed to exclude or to configure. This is all the basic confirmation. The only thing I had to do is to enter the CDN name. And for Varnish, what I found is um, I tend to uncheck this box. So I don't want Varnish to auto-purge every single time. And that is because when you're working on the blog post heavily and you just edit like five blog posts a day because you're working on them or you're saving a blog post over and over again, this can add some server load and then uh, slow down the server or slow down the backend of the website. So I found to disable the auto-purge Varnish and just purge Varnish every now and then manually using the breeze settings so you can purge modules right here and then purge varnish and that's really about it there's another thing that i have done for optimizing the website's loading speed and that is related to media and actually i don't have it done yet so i can show you right now so that's good that's one thing i always do and that is adding lazy loading so i'm missing out on uh, big time loading speed right here. Lazy loading basically means that you can uh, only load images that are actually in the viewport of the browser. So you don't load images all the way down on the website if they aren't visible. I use A3 lazy load for this usually, which is really reliable, but some, sometimes can cause issues. So don't do it the way I do it with right now and test it on a live website. I just do it because I'm very familiar with the plugin. If you are not tested on the staging website, that is super important. And let me briefly walk you through those settings as well. So lazy load activation, we want to have it on, obviously. We want to have lazy loading for images and content widgets, basically everything. If you want to skip certain images that have CSS classes attached to them, like uh, Revolution Slider images or something like that, you can enter the classes right here. For videos and iframes, we also want lazy loading. Script load optimization is in the footer, absolutely. I don't have any URIs or page types that I want to exclude. So this just goes to show how easy it is to configure A3 lazy load and how flexible it is as well. And for the one, one other thing really that I just want to change all the time is for the loading effect, I want the images to fade in instead of showing this weird spin up give animation. 
So save changes. Let's clear the browser cache. And let's open the website in an incognito window to see how the images come up. And as you can tell, it's working very, very smoothly right now. There you could see the lazy loading in action where the image appeared only after this section was loaded. So now what I really want to do is let's go to GT metrics again and let's run another test. Let's see if we can just by adding lazy loading reduce the fully loaded time even more. So I have no idea if that actually works. It should, but you know the internet is a weird place sometimes. So we'll see if it works as expected. Yeah. Okay, so we actually increase the server load time, the fully loaded time. So that is an interesting thing. Let's retest again. It could be just a server load on the website. You want to test multiple times anyways. And we probably also want to go to Pingdom to test it as well. just so we have multiple data points. And now we're again at 1.9 seconds and the total page size is the same. So it's basically somewhere in between 1.9 to 2.5 seconds, I guess. Pingdom doesn't show the lazy loaded images right here. So we have a load time of 1.15 seconds and a slightly different page size, more requests as well. So as you can see, um, you want to test multiple times and then just take the average value that you, that you get. But this is basically how I optimized WP Mastery. I use, to, to recap, I use Breeze. I am on Cloudways, which works really, really nicely for me. And I have the A3 Lazy Loading active. And I try to keep the number of plugins as slow and as small as possible. I don't want any unnecessary plugins on the website. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.